Stephen Murray confessed to murdering Father Rene Robert. The killing shocked our entire community back in April of 2016. That he kidnapped and murdered St. Augustine priest Father Rene Robert before dumping his body in Georgia in April of 2016. I could have got away with the murder if I just kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. This video contains the interrogation of a man who murdered a priest who had been trying to help him. Father Robert Rene was a Franciscan priest who had a heart for serving those around him. He had a special place in his heart for people who had been through the prison system and struggled with addictions. In 1996, he was introduced to Ashley Shreve, a troubled woman who he would continue to try to help over the course of the next 10 years. In 2016, Shreve introduced Father Reeve to her boyfriend, Stephen Murray. Murray had grown up in a deeply troubled home and had spent nearly half of his life in prison at various times. He was violent and unpredictable and admitted to struggling with disturbing mental images and urges that he couldn't control. The families of both Shreve and Murray begged Father Rene to stop giving them money since it was only going to hard drugs and they were falling further and further into addiction. Murray's sister, in particular, was concerned about the effects the drugs were having on his worsening mental state. Father Rene couldn't bring himself to, as he felt, abandon them and continued to enable them. The situation changed when Shreve went to prison. At this time, even Father Rene's good graces began to be stretched a little thin, and he could not maintain the outflow of money he had been providing. He turned down requests from Murray several times, but finally relented enough to let Murray use his car. Murray's first stop was Jacksonville, where he left Father Rene on a street corner while he went to buy drugs. The priest began to question Murray when he finally showed up, but Murray, on a drug-induced whim, decided that he was going to drive to South Carolina to find his two children, whom he had never met. Father Rene protested the long trip, but he was essentially a hostage. Once they had arrived in Aiken, South Carolina, Father Rene refused to be left on a street corner where he was unfamiliar with the area. Murray forced the 71-year-old priest to get into the trunk of the car. The search for his children ended in a dead end when their grandfather told Murray to leave, which made Murray furious. As he was driving away, Father Rene began to scream from the trunk that Murray would never get away with this and he would be going back to prison. This made Murray panic, realizing all the things that Father Rene could use to bring charges. After driving around, Murray came to a secluded area and pulled over, forcing Father Rene to walk into the woods. Murray shot him three times. Murray called his sister and said several things that made her worry. She tried calling Father Rene several times, but he didn't pick up, which was highly unusual. She called the police, who checked Father Rene's home, but found nothing. The next day, a fellow priest made another phone call to the police after Father Rene missed a funeral. This time, canine units were brought in for a search. Did you ever do with him in 21 guns, people? Hmm? In 21 guns, people? I've heard of him, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think you're starting out. Yeah, I don't know, I don't even get into that gang shit, man. I want some little pussies, man. I have mine, something, you know. One on one, I'm dragging this shit out their ass. I mean, I'm pretty good at fighting. I mean, I've fought my whole life, I mean. For you to beat me, it's because you a bad son of a bitch, you know. I mean, I, I, I ain't bad, but. I'm just tough, you know, I mean, I'm real, real tough, and you just ain't gonna hit me and lay me down, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You gonna have to really beat this cracker right here, you know, it's gonna really beat me. <laughs> it's not your first fight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you really gonna have to yeah. beat me good. <laughs> if, if you could beat me as bad as my daddy used to, then you might be able to win. Is, I, he, is so, he a big guy? Who, my daddy? Yeah, he's probably about maybe your size, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my daddy used to beat us. Well, I'm not seven years old, man. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not telling you, my daddy used to fucking, man, there's ain't no word for it. I mean, the beatings he used to give us. What do you think ought to happen now? I think, I think he needs to be tied up somewhere and tortured to death. Family members and law enforcement confirmed that Murray had a childhood. That would make most people sick to hear the details. Murray would later bring this subject up at his trial. He said that he did not use it as an excuse, but he wanted people to understand how severely he was mentally damaged. I think that's what should happen. I mean, I think that's only right, you know, just because of the people that he had hurt and how he had hurt them. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm literally walking on that beat somebody to death with a hammer. Glad one. You know what I call it? Was it here? Yeah, if you make it. How long ago? It's been months and years ago. I was young, man. I was very, very young. He left a man on the power lines. Beat him to death. I mean, you know, I said beat him to death. You beat him to death with a hammer. Over, over some money. Hard game. <laughs> Get him to death. I mean, he sounds like an animal. <clears throat> man, you know this? That's what I feel like sometimes, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I lose control of myself sometimes, you know? It's like I can't, I can't control myself sometimes, man. I mean, I choked my sister out, duct tape her up, put her in the closet. I mean, didn't mean to. Didn't know I did it until I did it. Crystal. Crystal. Murray's sister, Crystal, had very little to do with him after the incident he described to the detectives. I recently released another highly intense video on my Patreon, an explosive altercation between two cops where tension escalated so quickly, resulting in a drawn gun and a devastating gunshot. In a mere 26 seconds, witness the events unfold as two officers engage in a fight that turns deadly. Watch this video and more at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. I mean, I took her out four oh, times. She was, I don't know, I mean, I was, I was in my early 20s. She was probably, probably 18 or something like that. Do you think it was learned behavior from your dad? I don't know, man. I just lose myself sometimes, man. It's like, for me to do this, <coughs> And I don't, I don't know what makes me start. I don't know. It's just like fucking. I just get caught up in it. It's like fucking rage, man. Where it just makes me feel so good doing it. it makes me just feel like a fucking. Man, I can't even fucking explain it, man. I mean, fucking it's lose control, you know. Wait, did you get like that when you were doing, when you were doing drugs, or is yeah, no, it's, it's just, just that? It's just me, I mean, it's just me, I mean, I've, I've been drugs, don't have nothing to nothing, that's nothing to do with it, it's just fucking, it's just there, man, I mean, I try to stop it, and then fucking, you can't, man, I mean, it's like a fucking, just in your fucking head, and it's fucking just, you lose control, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I just lose control, I mean, I can't, I can't control it, I mean, I can't control myself, I can't, I can't do nothing with it, I mean, do you feel like yourself when you're doing it? Or does it like, feel like an out of body? It feels like an out of body, man. I mean, it really does, man. I mean, it don't even, it don't even, I know it's not me. I know it's not, because, I mean, I know that's not me. It just happens, man. I mean, I can't fucking stop it. I mean, it's like fucking just, it just happens. What's the worst thing you've done? What triggers it, man? What's the trigger? I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. I really don't, man. I mean, just, I get depressed sometimes, man. Even as my sister, man, I get, I get really, really bad depressed. Like, really, really bad. Like, don't talk to me, don't come around me, don't, don't, don't nothing with me. You know what I mean? I mean, I get, I get real bad depressed. Like, stay in the room for days. Stay by myself for days. I'm talking to nobody. And that's usually where it starts at, man. I just make bad decisions from there. And I can't, it's like I can't, I can't stop myself sometimes. I mean, it's like I go in and I don't, I don't, I don't stop until I'm done. And sometimes I don't even remember. Sometimes I just, like, this happens and I don't know what the fuck I did. Like my sister, I don't, I don't remember that. I mean, what did you think when you found out? I mean, I believed it, but I don't know. I didn't remember like me physically doing it. Like, no, I mean, I know. Yeah, Bubba. You know, they started the fucking. I lied support charges behind that. Do what? They charged me for that. Choking my sister out and duct taping her up and stuff her in the closet. So I took her out like four times till she pissed and shit on me. How bad I choked her. I used a whole lot of duct tape on her and everything. You still talk to her? 
<clears throat> somewhat. I mean, we don't, we're not close. We're not, you know, we're not anything close to love, you know. Mm-hmm. And she never forgave me. Forgave myself, you know. I was gonna ask that. Did you ever forgive yourself? I never forgave myself. Didn't mean to. It sounds like you've had a terrible life. During almost all his stays in prison, Murray would speak to mental health professionals in an effort to seek help. He never stayed on the medication outside of prison and struggled with finding a therapist he felt could understand everything he had gone through. The only thing that really helped me was Seroquel, because it kept me sleep all the time. I don't want to wait long enough to make bad decisions. Sometimes just talking about it. I tried, Helps you. I tried talking to my fucking I ran out of breath, man. I mean, Who I you talk to? I talked to so many counselors, man. I, mean, <laughs> I talked to so many mental health counselors. and I even talked to a counselor that had been raped before. Somebody that could relate to me. I spent years looking for her in prison. You know, counselor, 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 you know, switching up. Just looking for that one counselor that I feel like I can relate to. You know, somebody that I can see something. You know, I don't know. Seems like nobody understands enough to actually help me, man. You know why? See, to start, for, for somebody to start helping me, I would first have to help myself by letting things go, you know. And I don't know, I mean, I. Well, sometimes it's hard to let things go, but you know, you got to work at it slowly, it slowly. And like, like I say, talking is it's good. The rights. Yes. The rights. Stephen Murray, <laughs> investigation, Aiken County. I'm going to read him to you, Stephen. And, uh, you know, the process. Um, it says here you have the following rights under the United States Constitution. You do not have to make a statement or say anything. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you. And to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, we'll only appoint it for you before any questioning if you wish. If you do answer questions, you have the right to stop answering questions at any time and consult her lawyer. Do you understand? I understand. Are you willing to talk to us with this rights in mind? I mean, what are we talking about? Well, we're, we're here and uh, we're conducting an investigation and... Uh, I'm Father Renee. I'm Father Renee. And we need your help to... Uh, Try to find them. Try to find them. Okay. So, with this rights of mine, if you're willing to talk to me, can you sign here? I'll tell you what I know, what happened, what, you know, what's going on. I mean, it was, I mean. Father Rene had been introduced to Shreve 10 years prior. As with many others who had been through the prison system, he tried to befriend her and give her money in an effort to help her and make her feel as if someone cared. Shreve considered him a foolish mark, only good for an easy source of money. Before we move forward, I want to extend my thanks for watching. This video today has no sponsor, so if you're enjoying it, subscribing helps the channel grow. You can also check out my second channel, Stranger Crimes, after this video. Did anybody else give you guys any money? Any money? Yeah, to help you all out. Father Renee gave her so much fucking money, man. I mean, it was fucking ridiculous. I mean, it was fucking ridiculous. 
I mean, you know, he gave me money too, you know. I mean, so I can't, you know, I can't say nothing. I mean, but man, he gave her fucking tons of money. Like, whoa. <laughs> how, how often did he give her money? Every day. Every day. Why did he give her so much money? I don't know. I mean, you know, he, you know, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't nothing that I was mad about or anything, you know what I mean? Because it was saving me money, you know what I mean? didn't matter to me, you know what I mean? It was okay, you know? I know she wasn't fucking him, you know what I mean? Hey, he's an old guy, you know what I mean? Old fella, I mean, I, mean, I know there wasn't nothing going on. there's always... Yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that was the last thing on my mind, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't worried about that, I mean... Well, do you, you think, think she was playing him? No. I mean, yeah, she, she was, yeah, she was playing him in a lot of ways. And I tried to tell Father Renee, I told him so many times, man, but what was really going on, I, I personally, personally, like, sat down and told him. What'd you tell him? I know she's got a problem, Father Renee. She 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 shoving needles in her arm with the money that you give her, you know. Cause he's constantly calling me, you know, telling me, you know, he, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was giving Father Renee money every week, you know what I'm saying? Paying him back. I was giving him fifty, hundred dollars a week, you know, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I can afford that week. I was giving him money, you know, and just to pay some money back that she was getting. And it never amounted to what he was giving her. He was giving her probably between two to four hundred a day. How do you afford that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, so I wish I could supposed to be poor. pious and poor yeah. when you're in the priesthood. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he, he definitely forking out some money, man. I mean, he, he was. Murray is exaggerating. While Father Rene gave Shreve money and access to credit cards, the total amount wasn't high enough to be several hundred dollars a day. I mean, forking out some money, but but you know, she played him in so many ways, man. I mean, like this phone situation. <laughs> this guy named Jeffrey that he. But I think he was helping out and I was in prison. Mm -hmm. Father Renee had his phone. Well, Father Renee let Ashley hold it. Ashley lost it. And she used that phone so many incidents to um, get money from him. Oh, I'm going to get your phone back, but I need I need $200. You know, the person that got it said, I can't get it unless I bring $200. Father Renee can give her $200. Mm -hmm. He give us a ride down there, and she go get her dope and come back and say, "Well, they said they couldn't, they wouldn't give me the phone, you know. They took the money." Father and they would just fucking drop us back off and leave. I mean, like so many times. Did he act angry? No, not at all. I mean, he would slap the steering wheel and do like that to her, you know. And, I mean, but, Did he know what she was doing? He didn't want to believe it. It's not that he didn't know. But I told him several times, several, many times, man. I sat down and told that man that what was going on. And, I mean, hers actually broke up several times over it. I mean, because of me telling him, you know, she, why are you trying to fuck my hustle up? Why are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? And I just, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted her to do right, you know. I wanted her to straighten up because I really did love her, man. I mean, I, I loved her from the bottom of my fucking heart, man. I mean, I fell in love with this bitch. Is that how you met Father Renee through her? That's how I met Father how do you meet him? She, me and her got together and she was like, look, you know, I want to tell you something. I said, okay, you know, shoot for it. You know, you can tell me anything. You know? I said, look, I got this guy. He gives me money. He's an old man. He's a priest. And he looks out for me, you know. I said, okay, you know, that's cool, you know. That's cool. And she said, you want to meet him? I said, sure, you know. I mean, if he wants to meet me, I'll meet him, you know. And that's cool with me, you know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have no problem with it, you know. I mean, hey, you giving her money, you helping me out. <laughs> Saving me money, you know. <laughs> I mean, let's just be serious. I mean, I'm not the one forking it all out every day. I mean, I could keep money in my pocket. <laughs> so, <clears throat> he came over, I met him. I actually took him out to eat. I took him to Bono's. I took Father Renee and her to Bono's right there on Lane Avenue. And we sat down and I had a couple of drinks. And... I actually talked Father Renee into having a drink. I didn't, I didn't have to talk him into it. I would offer him a beer. I said, would you like to drink a beer with Father Renee? He said, mm, nah. And I got my beer and opened it, and I chugged it and ordered another one. He said, oh, I have one, okay? You know, have a beer. How long ago was that? Uh, let's see. Probably a matter of four months, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe four months. Uh, um, me and Matt here, you know, we talked and, you know, I told him what was going on, you know. Me and Ashley was having some rough times and I was having a rough time dealing with some of the things that she was doing, you know. And 
you know, we was talking to Father Renee about it, you know, and asking his advice on, you know, he was a priest and, you know, I felt like, you know, he wouldn't give me no wrong advice, you know, so she didn't want me to ask him about it, you know, she didn't want me to ask his advice, but I did it anyways, you know, just because I felt like, you know, he, you know what I'm saying, if I could get any good advice, it would come from him, mm. you know, he's got a lot of wisdom, you know, he, he's older, you know, so if I could get any good advice, it would come from him, so I asked him, you know, and he, he gave us good advice, you know, he told us to take it step by step, you know, don't, don't rush into anything, you know, which we had already rushed into it, I mean, I went from knowing her to living with her, you know, with her living with me, I mean, I mean, it was, it was the worst thing. But can I ask you a question? Your father and Renee kind of, kind of stopped coming around once you actually went to prison? Yeah, he never stopped coming around. How did he treat you? Always treat me good. But um, with respect, and, you know, he was always a good man. I mean, he would always help me. Although Father Rene did not completely stop visiting Murray, he did not do so as often, and it started to turn down most requests for money and car rides. I always, you know, I continue to give him money every week, even though Ashley was gone, I still gave him money, you know, mm -hmm. just because I feel like it was the right thing to do because he helped us so much, you know. I mean, he didn't help me, but, you know, he did because he was giving Ashley money, you know, so he did help me, I mean, he took a load off my back, you know, I mean, he took a big load off my back. Was he coming back and forth mm -hmm. from, to Jackson or St. Augustine? Every day. Okay. Every single day, like, every day he was there. And, you know, the man had my most respect, you know, and then... Where, where, where were you meeting at? Just meeting him. Mm -hmm. He'd come to us. I mean, they, they, every day. Were you living in the hotel at the time? I was living in the hotel at that time. I mean, everybody at that hotel knows Father in the Emmy because mm -hmm. he's up there so much. I mean, the room, he's usually paid in his name, you know, his credit card. He, he would give us the card, you know, like most of his cards, I know the numbers to him. I mean, I know a couple of the credit card numbers. I know... As uh, the credit card numbers to use. Credit cards and other IDs were found in Murray's possession. 32084 is what you use at the gas pumps or something like that. His um, Wells Fargo was 1921. His Bank of America is um, 0918, I think. I mean, because, you know, he said just give them to us. I mean, give them to us, you know, the number. I mean, I mean hell, Ashley's had fucking three or four of his cars for a whole week at a time, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, Ashley's max fifteen, twenty thousand dollars credit cards out. How can you afford that? There was even a credit card that Father Renee had in Shreve's name. The bills came to him and he kept them paid. I mean I, I never I, I, I never asked. I mean, you know You ever been to his place? No, never been to his place. No. Okay. Do you know where he lives? No. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know, I don't know where he I know he stays in Saint Augustine. Mm -hmm. his, his, the road he lives on is fucking, um, I was writing him because he was sending me and asking his letters back and forth and I was locked up because, you know, you can't write him, make him me. Mm -hmm. So I would mail Ashley's letter to him and he would mail it to Ashley. That way she would get it and Ashley would do the same. And it's just like, you know, his address is Moultrie or something like that. I ain't sure, man, or something, man. I got it written down somewhere at the house, you know. I was right, and, but I mean, I've never been to his place. He's never there. been inside his house? Or never, does he have a house, apartment? I don't know. That's an apartment because on, on the address, apartment 24. Mm -hmm. yeah, the address. Do you apartment. know how to get there? No, I don't know how to get there. Do not know how to get there. When was the last time you were in St. Augustine? Oh, uh, a couple of days ago, I was just there riding around. I was just riding. I didn't have nothing else to do. I was just riding. Were you riding in his car? Yes. Okay. When did you get his car? Uh, I can't think of which day it was, but me and Father Renee was riding. He was taking me down out past Chafee to meet somebody. He didn't know that I was going to meet somebody for some weed, which I didn't. The trusting priest was often not told where Shreve or Murray would take him, and they would usually drop him off on a street corner while they made their illegal purchases. Father Rene had no idea where Murray planned on taking him that final day. I didn't tell him that because, you know, he's a priest and he's got a lot going on, and I wasn't, wasn't going to tell him that, you know, because out of respect. I mean, and we went out past Chafee right there with a fucking, uh, I think it's a kangaroo, right there at the corner of Chafee and uh, Beaver. 
Yeah, on the other side of the highway? Yeah, right there, there's a kangaroo. When I passed there, I was supposed to be meeting the dude at the kangaroo right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. He fucking called me and told me to meet him somewhere else. So I asked Father Renee if he would stand right here for a minute. You know, Father Renee usually does that. You know, he'll fucking, like, actually fucking drop him off at the Walgreens and stay gone two hours and leave him sitting at the Walgreens for two mm -hmm. hours. Like, I don't know why the fuck this man keeps doing that. You know, like, why the fuck you let him, let this girl do that to you? You know, that's what I kept asking him. Like, you know, why you, why? I mean, why? I told him plenty of times she was on drugs, you know, she was a needle user or fucking shit like that, you know, like, why? You know, he just kept doing it. I mean, I mean I was gonna argue because it wasn't coming out of my pocket, you know what I mean? I know, but still. Still, you know, it was wrong, and that's why I told him, you know, that's, that's why I went to him like a man, you know, and told him what was really going on, you know? I mean, it wasn't like I had a problem shoving needles in my arm and stuff. I mean, you know, it, you know, it wasn't mine. Were you ever confronted about it? What, confirmed about what? About him giving all that money to Ashley? Never. Never confirm. I mean, I never had a problem with it. I mean, hell, you helping me out. I mean, you know, you just took a load off my back, you know, and that fucking 300 you gave her today, you know, helped me out because I didn't have to come off of it, you know. I mean, I mean I've never complained about it. I mean, and, you know, it never was an issue to me or that he was giving her money. I mean, and, you know, it never was a bad thing for me. I mean, I've always looked at it as a good thing because, I mean, it, you know, it helped us out. I mean, even though, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I was doing all right. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't doing bad. I mean, I, I wasn't. Even when I was doing bad, I still had a couple hundred in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And I kept that, you know, because I had a standard, you know. I, I wasn't going no less than a couple hundred in my wallet. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can forget that, you know. I mean, I'm not going past that. Like, I asked you, would, so would try to get me to fucking spin, spin. Oh, come on, let's just, you know, I like, no, I can't do it, you know, I got to. Cause you know I'm not gonna go to work and climb trees all week broke. Mm -hmm. Lunch when it's lunch time, you know I'm gonna buy me something to eat. When I'm thirsty, I'm gonna buy me something to drink. I'm not. There's no habit strong you, enough you, to make you, me. You work. Busy. You work for it. You earn it. That's right. So, I mean, uh, what, what happened out on Shippy? I dropped him off. And I never came back. I mean, I'm, I, I, I ended up doing drugs, mm -hmm. and I never came back and got him. And that's how I got his car. I mean, I never, never came back and got him. I just started doing drugs, man. I was About what time did you drop him off? It's probably nine or so. At night? Yeah. On Sunday? I'm not sure which day it was. I mean, I was in. I mean, it's probably, it, it was late, and I'm not sure what day it was. I'm really not sure. I mean, it was, it was late, and... I started using drugs, man, and it's like fucking, I just I know, lost lost myself, you know, and got stuck. I guess you could say got stuck, most of all got stuck. And by the time I realized what I was really doing, man, it was fucking hours, hours later, like fucking 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning later, you know, like mm -hmm. 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in trouble, you know, I shouldn't have did that. And, it was too late, you know, so I just fucking kept the car, you know what I mean? I know that, that the police is probably looking for me for it, and he's probably done called the police, and I was scared, you know? Mm -hmm. Murray's telling a partial truth. He did leave Father Renee on a street corner, but he came back later after searching for his children and then using drugs. So what did you do after that? Fucking just drove and drove. Where'd you that? Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Where's everywhere? <clears throat> All over Jacksonville, fucking went to South Carolina, St. Augustine. Um, I just fucking rode around everywhere. I was scared. I mean, I know that I was in trouble. I know that I should have taken his car back. And I know that I was wrong. I was dead ass wrong for doing that. And I felt bad, but I knew that it was too late. You know, what I mean, it was too late to turn back or try to make anything, you know what I'm saying? But it was too late. I mean, I shouldn't have did that. I knew that I was wrong. I don't understand why you would think just stealing a car is so wrong to go down. The kind of things that you said to your sister, or the kind of things that you said to him and stuff like that. Well, There's because, more to it. Well, because I was at that point of I'm just being done with everything, man. You know, man I, I know, but you, you stole cars before. 
mean, it's just I'm a not, property, I mean, I mean, I ain't, I ain't, property crime. I ain't stole a car from somebody that has helped me out so much and somebody that trusted in me so much. Somebody that would do anything for me. And I just failed them. I just let them down. And that's why it meant so much to me because this person has, has did anything for me. And this person has helped me out to the extent that where nobody else would. I could call this person and say, hey, I need $200 for all of them. What do you think um, he is right now? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if I know it, I'd be more than happy to help you. I mean, because, I mean, he meant as much to me as probably as he did anybody else that's out there looking for. Murray knows exactly where Father Renee's body is, but he is holding on to the thin sliver of hope that he can make the detectives believe that someone else killed him while Murray was away. There's a lot of people looking for him, and it's important that there's a closure for what happened to him. That's right. That's right. I understand that. I mean, if I had any help for you, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to help you. I, you're the last person I saw, and I think you can help me. I mean, I can't. I mean, so if you're going to keep on trying to dig at me, then we ain't got nothing to talk about. Man. I mean, I told you what I had to tell you. I mean, you know, digging's not going to get you nowhere. It's just going to put you in a hole. Because mm -hmm. you're going to dig yourself in a hole and you're not going to be able to see me no more to ask questions. I mean, I mean, that's just it. What do you mean? I mean, you ain't getting nowhere. That's what I'm telling you because that's it. That's what happened. But was would you drop them off in front of the store, behind the store? And down the road, past the store. I told you that. I'm talking about past the store. I thought it was at the kangaroo. I said past the kangaroo. Okay, going in north? I'm going down Beaver. Like you, you're going towards the kangaroo from Beaver. Like if you going through McDuff and you keep going down Beaver, down past that way. Out that way. That's why I dropped them off the. Okay. I could show you. I mean, hell, we get in the car right now. I could show you. We well, can't do that. I mean, I mean of course, it weighs it off. Yeah, I mean, of so it's somewhere in Marietta? Yeah, somewhere right now. I mean, I, got my, I mean I'm not real familiar with that area, but I mean, I, I know that area. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I mean, that's it. I mean, that's that's what happened. I mean, is it. he okay? You asked me, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, hell, hell if I know. You know, he touched a lot of people. Um, he helped you big time. He was helping time. Ashley. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people looking for him. There's a lot of people worried about him. Um, you know, we we haven't heard from him since you were the last person who saw him. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot. This man, he touched a lot of lives. He touched my life. I mean, I mean, I mean, he really did. I mean, he was a big help to me, and that's why I felt so, so ashamed of what I did. You know, what I mean, I just left this man standing there. You know, out in the middle of the cold. You know, and didn't mean to, didn't intentionally do that. But the drugs, you know, I mean, the drugs. You know, once I, once I got done to get the weed, it's like, just, you know, I ended up getting cracked. Didn't, didn't mean to, didn't want to, but I did, and I got stuck, you know, I and mean, the crack got me stuck, it just made me just real paranoid, and I was fucking this. By the time Murray picked Father Renee up, he was angry and on edge. The priest should not have gotten back in the car with Murray, but he likely thought that as long as he maintained an understanding manner, Murray would not harm him. Stuck right there in that one spot, you know, and I didn't realize it, and, so I was coming down like to fucking like five thirty six o'clock that morning. I was like, "Oh shit, you know what the fuck?" I did you ask him for money? Mm, I have a few times, but no, not that night. No, not, not, not did that he give you anything? Hmm? Did he give you any money? Mm -hmm. That night? No, no, he didn't give me no money that night. No, but I mean, he had given me money before, you mm -hmm. know, to help me out. I mean, like when I first got out of jail for that driving, you know, I mean, he gave me a thing. 40, 45, Western Union, he on Western Union. Matter of fact, you go look at the Western Union records, I mean, and see where he is. Yeah, I know that he give, he been giving you money before. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he has, I mean, a couple times. He's Western Union money in my name. Actually, he's like, God, I leave. You go look at the Western Union on hers, you know, you probably see about forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of Western Union. I just don't understand how he had so much money. How long, how long, 
He went to visit you every day, you said over here. Yeah, he was. He was. He he was around about every day, man. I mean, about every day. So I didn't mind, you know. I mean, here we go out to eat. We, you know, what I'm telling we talk, you know. He come over. I mean, that's just actually fucking like pretty much fist fault in front of him. I mean, <laughs> like with him sitting right there. I mean, she slapped the shit out of him with him sitting right there. I mean, how will you feel if, if something happened to him where you dropped him off at? I feel real bad. Real bad, I man. Like real, real bad. If we wanted to find him dead or alive to bring him some closure to the people that are looking, where we would look? I would help you. I mean, I would show you why I dropped him off that I told you that. I would show you. What was he wearing last time you saw him? Man, you have asking a lot now. I mean, it was just a couple of days ago. Yeah, but that's still a lot. I mean, I've had a lot happen. In was the he past. wearing his thing? I don't know. No, he no. Come on, dude. What it's collar? I guess they call it. The rusty. I, I couldn't honestly tell you what he was exactly wearing. I know he always wears his fucking sandals. I mean, he always wears his sandals. Mm -hmm. But it's the open toe sandals. I mean, he always wears them. Like, well, what time did you guys meet? Or did you call him? How, how did he, what happened there? What, did he come to see you? Did you call him that day to go get the weed or, or whatever? How did that happen? I think I told him, I think I was going to give him some money. I think so, yeah. I think I was giving him money. So you called him? Well, I think so. I think so. I think I called him and told him that I had some money for him if he wanted to come get it because I wasn't able to pay him, you know, because I was locked up, you know, mm -hmm. and I had just got out of jail and I hadn't got up on my feet good yet to pay him some money. And I called him and told him I had him some money. Where do you think you have that? I think he picked me up right there by my dad's. Um, off of Beaver Street. Off of Beaver Street. Okay. And he picked me up. He picked you up in the yard. He picked you up on the road. How we go? Um. I think he picked me up in the yard. Okay. I'm not. I mean, I, I mean, I like mean, smoking on a cigarette, man. I ask him a lot of questions, and well, this, this is what we're trying to do. Honestly, he. We're trying to. The, the reason why we ask this question is we're trying to find out exactly where we need to go to try to follow up the last steps that we, we need to find this man. Um, I never met him. I don't know who he was. Um, but from what I've heard, even from you, he doesn't sound like a bad person. Um, you know, our job is to... Father Rene made it his mission in life to help as many people as he could and was very active in his outreach. People were alarmed by his disappearance almost immediately and pressured the police to search for him. Bring him, you know, find him, dead or alive. I mean, he might be out there, he might need some medical care, he might need something that, you know, we need to try to, I mean, it, you, you said it yourself, he's a good man. We need to, we need to try to bring him, we need to try to find him. And what I'm asking is, I'm asking your help any piece of information that you can give us so that we can go look and try to find can help us bring this man that it's so much for you according to you bring him home okay that's no i mean i'm answering every question you asked i know yeah i mean i know i mean so i mean yeah i appreciate i appreciate you doing that i mean it's it's just one of those things so when we're asking that information, we're trying to get specific information so that we can go to those locations and try to find, you know, what could have happened to him. Well, so then I'll get me back to Jack. Yeah, I'll be able to help. I mean, I mean, because, you know, he's sitting here explaining it probably ain't going to What do you think? Well, Is he dead? I mean, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I mean, personally, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I mean, I couldn't tell you if he's dead or alive. I couldn't tell you if he needs help, medical help or nothing, because I don't know. I mean, if he is somewhere out there still alive, it's getting to be a couple of days, and we need to know where he's at so we can help him. Mm. Yeah, do you? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, if there was something I could do to help you, you know what I'm saying, do that, I would. I mean, like I said, as soon as I get back to Carolina, I can show you exactly. How do you, how do you call them that day? Do you, do you have a, do you have a phone? I've, I've had phones here and there off and on. I always end up throwing them out the window or something, because I get tired of phones, you know I mean? I've never, you know, I got locked up, man. They had the flip phones, the Nokia phones, the antennas you pull out, I and mean, they ain't got none of them big ass fucking smartphones, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's some fucking big ass phones, man. I, yeah, I thought it was TV, people were walking around with. <laughs> so when when you say you drop them off around that, that gas station, I'm not, I'm not from Jacksonville. I don't know Jacksonville that well. And the gas station there that you say you dropped them off. If we were to go over there and pull some surveillance, and uh, most of those gas stations have cameras, we will see his car with you and him in it. No, we didn't pull in the gas station. I said we went past the gas station. No, I'm sorry, that's what I just told you, right? And we went past the kangaroo. Okay. So I'm far past that. Man. Uh huh. All the judge. I mean, I would have to show you. I would, you know, I'm not that Is there any line marks or anything? Like I'm not sure. If you looked at the map, would you be able to kind of tell? Mm, it, was, it was dark outside, so I mean, you know, I probably couldn't give you an accurate. Like, I would, I would actually have to be riding in the car. What do you think see? could happen to him, man? Well, you just asked that, and I just gave you an answer, you know, and you asked him the same questions. Expecting a different answer, you know, that's a definition of insanity. Yeah, you do the same thing, expecting different results. You ask the same question, you just ask me while I go. You want the same answer? Or no, I, the first time I asked you, you, we were talking about, I said that we wanted to bring him back if it was alive. You said, what do you think? He's dead or alive? You think he's okay? Well, I, I, I don't know. That. <laughs> you guys, I want to go to. You got any of this property? Um, I think I do. What do you got? A credit card. How'd you get those? It was in the car. Okay. Anything else? Um, just whatever, whatever was in the car. I mean, it was in the car. And yeah. I mean, is everything that you that you had in the car still in the car? I didn't, I didn't like, tear the car apart and throw anything away or anything like that. Okay. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean everything should still be in the car. What's all a cigarette, man? Y'all, I mean, I mean, I mean y'all got my nerve to a slap up, man, asking all these hundred thousand, hundred questions. No, oh, we're just talking, man. I know. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get a cigarette? Yeah, and definitely. Then we'll come up back out in here and talk some more. Definitely. Murray stalls for time, knowing that his story is too weak to pass for the complete truth. Do you see, do you see where we're at, though? Yeah, I mean, yeah. definitely. I mean, definitely. I mean, I definitely understand everything. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not blaming y'all, saying y'all wrong or anything, because you know you're exactly right. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, bringing a man back home would be the ideal thing to do. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did what I did. You know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's. You know, I mean, I felt bad about it. I did. I mean, that was that was a terrible thing for me to do, and I know I shouldn't have did it. And but you know, like I say, sometimes you know, we all make bad decisions, and that was just happened to be one of them. You know. Okay. Let's do your thing. Go downstairs. Go here. I'll come back. Mm -hmm. Can I smoke two at a time? No, about that. They don't want to make that. Father Renee ever have any issues with going over there? 
No, I mean he. I mean he would have never had no issue anyways, cause I'd have beat anything that had an issue with him. You know, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have hurt anything that stepped in the way of father. I mean, I'd have, I'd have hurt anything. I mean, anybody that gave him a problem, I would hurt. I would destroy. There were no known conflicts between Father Rene and anyone else at the time of his disappearance. I mean, so he would have never had a problem nowhere. Either, period. I mean, as long as I was with him and I was there. <clears throat> and everybody knew that, you know. Everybody at the store knows me. I mean, I knocked a couple of them out at the store. I mean, flatlined a couple of them. Yeah. Um, you know, you said you, you and Father Renee went to the uh, kangaroo. Yeah, I didn't say that. I said we went past kangaroo. Okay. Um, before that, you said that he let you use credit cards and stuff. How long had that been going on? Couple months. I mean, I actually have a um, a phone number that I can give you, and you can get the phone records from it, where you would text us the credit card numbers. What was what was his phone number? His phone number? Yeah. Nine zero four six one four oh eight oh two. And the other phone number that he used to text us all the numbers to was nine zero four four hundred. I'd rather call my sister and get it. If you give her the first, the first couple of days. Come on, Bobby Jean. Yeah, just tell it was the 400, the Galaxy number. And um, all the records is on there where he would text us the credit card numbers, the the amount that we could spend and stuff like that, you know I mean? All that's on there. I mean, I actually threw that phone out the window because me and her was arguing. But she kept erasing stuff, you know. I would catch her erasing stuff, you know. And I already told her, you know, I said, you know, you don't, you know, you don't have to hide nothing from me, you know. You can be honest with me because I'm just that type of person. Mm -hmm. I would rather you be honest with me and then versus me coming and find some kind of lie, you know. Murray had a volatile temper, and the slightest thing could set it off. I mean, that's what I would consider myself sometimes, man. I mean, the things that, things that go through my head, and you know, man, if I. If I carried out everything I thought, I mean, it would, it would, it would, it would, it would be bad, man. Because I mean, so many things go through my head, man, like, just bad. What's the worst thing you ever thought of? Probably. So many bad things, you know. I mean, I don't know. Getting tired, man. I mean, Do you ever think about killing somebody? No, I mean, I don't. I don't just just want to kill somebody just to kill them, you know. Especially not somebody I love, you know. Somebody that's there for me. Somebody that's, you know, what I'm saying going to help me. I mean, I, I wouldn't. Murray knows what the detective is implying and tries to distance himself from any answer that might imply he ever thought about killing Father Rene. Even though the detective spoke in generic terms, Murray specifically mentions people that tried to help him. I wouldn't kill them because that would be biting in if he's me, you know? Did you love Father Rene? I had a lot of love and respect for Father Rene. I mean, a lot. I mean, because he, he was there when my sister wasn't. You know, when I could when I could call my sister and she would tell me no, Bubba, you know, I can't, you know, like I got out of jail this time and I called my sister. She was who I can depend on, you know, and I was, I was down. I mean, I was, I was where I didn't want to be, you know, I was depressed. I was, I was real bad down and I said, you know, can you help me? You know, she said, I can't do that, boy. I can't help you. And then I call Father Renee. Father Renee say, go pick up a Western Union. Or I'm going to bring you some money. I'm on my way right now. Mm -hmm. And of course, I had a lot of love for Father Renee. I mean, he was there when nobody was, you know? I mean, when, when I couldn't depend on nobody else, he was there. Yeah, I mean, I did have a lot of love for Father Renee. 
He ever betrayed you? No. Never. never. Not even, never even felt it. I mean, never even, you know, that's something I didn't have to worry about. He was a good, honest man, straight up, straightforward, straight going, you know. I mean, he was, he was that, that type of person. Do you feel like you betrayed him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely do. I mean, me me leaving him standing there, and, you know, for that long, that long of a period of time, yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I feel like I was wrong for that. And Have you tried I to was, call him to apologize? No. Why not? Because, I mean, I was just, I felt bad. I mean, I felt ashamed. I felt, I felt like... You know, after all this man is did for me, you know, why did I do that, you know? He, he's a man of the cloth. If there's anybody that's going to forgive you, it would be him. Yeah. Don't you think that would? Well, I mean, you know, all that wasn't going through my head at the time, you know? I mean, I wasn't thinking of that. I mean, that's not something that was on the top of my list of thinking, you know? But you had a couple mm -hmm. of days to think about it. A couple of days, yeah. Did you ever go back out to the area to look for him? I went back down that way, but he wasn't there, so... And what well, I was I was scared, you know. I mean I know he probably called the police on me and you never did. <clears throat> never did. I mean but I was thinking in my head, you know, I mean this man's gonna report his car stolen and like I was just Did you think the car was stolen Tuesday night? It is unlikely that Father Rene would have reported Murray to the police. He knew it would mean a return to jail for Murray and Father Rene would have been afraid doing so would break the trust he had believed he had earned from Murray. I mean, I thought the car was stolen from the whole, whole get-go, you know, I mean... You know, Is that why you took off? I didn't take off. I mean, well, you know, when you, you took off? I mean, you know, I mean, I came to South Carolina, I mean, that was it. What day did you come to South Carolina? I don't know. I mean, I let somebody, I let a dope dealer borrow the car for some drugs. And I got it back from him. I'm not sure. I can't. I can't even give you an exact date. But Where'd you meet the drug dealer? <sighs> Stone Canal. Which one? All the way down at the end, a uh, yellow, orange looking store right to your left, right across the road from Yuli Street. Yuli and Canal. Yeah, Yuli and Canal. What was his name? They call him Mike, Big Mike, or something like that. I ain't sure. What do you look like? Big, ugly. What kind of hair do you got? Dreads. Long or short? Uh, it's hard to judge because he kind of keeps them up a lot of times. What was he wearing that day? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, I don't just kind of try to remember what everybody wears, you know? Yeah, what time of day was it? I'm not sure. I mean, I was probably on drugs and mine somewhere else, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't, that's not something that I keep up with. I mean, but I did, you know what I'm saying, rent the car out for drugs and, I mean, it wasn't my car, but, I mean, I figured it was already reported stolen, so, you know, what could it hurt me, you know what I mean? What did he give you for it? He gave me 80. 80 hard? How much crack you been smoking? Like when? Like since all this stuff started happening. No, no, but I mean, it wasn't like I've been out there for days smoking crack or anything. I mean, it wasn't. Sorry, my wife keeps calling me. <laughs> what do you think if Father Renette had put you in the situation that you put him? What do you think you would have done? Do you think he would have called you and apologized? I don't know, because I can't judge the next man's feelings, you know, how he feels and how you feel. I don't know who you are or what you're capable of. You know, I know you seem like a good man, but I also know everybody has a different side to him, you know. Everybody's two sides. We were talking about that earlier. Everybody, you know, just because you think they're good, don't mean they're good, you know. Mm -hmm. you, know you know what I'm saying? They could be good, but bad. They could yeah. be bad, but good. You, know, you never know who you deal with. You know, just because he's a preacher, don't mean that they won't kill you or rob you, because anybody's capable of anything. That's Do you true. think it's true what they say about Catholic priests? I don't know what they say. You know what they say? Oh, about messing with the kids? Yeah. I don't think that. I think that's.
the case for anybody because anybody's capable of anything. But would it just be in about the Catholic priest? No, I don't believe that. You think Renee's capable of that? No, Renee's definitely not capable of that. I mean, Renee's a good man. I mean, no such accusations had ever been made against Father Rene, but the detectives are searching for any kind of motive. And given the nature of the things Murray's father did to him growing up, the question is unsurprising. I see nothing but good in him, and I mean, I, I hate that I did that. You know, I hate that. I mean, I, I feel really bad for that, and I wish I hadn't did that. I mean, you're a good man, but you've done bad things too. I have. So, you know, Father Rene was what he was. You know, not making a judgment on him being a good guy or a bad guy. But we all have skeletons in our closet. That's correct. We've all done things that, you know, we shouldn't have done. You know, Father Rene seems to do a lot of spend time with, you know, people that the rest of the people in the clergy probably wouldn't. Agreed? I mean, Say have you been to church? You've been to church before, right? Uh -huh. Did your pastor ever come out and give you money? I mean, there's no way that this guy had that much money to give this stuff. That's, you know, that's pastor in the biggest church in the world isn't going to have that. I mean, you're supposed to be lead a pious life as a pastor, as a priest. I mean, you know, I mean, it is. I mean, you know, it was a lot of money. I mean, and he did give a lot of money. I mean, but as far as me questioning where the money came from or him having the money to give, you know, I never questioned that or anything because, you know, I mean. Did Ashley see him as a sucker? She didn't. I mean, she, I see that she, you know, she, I don't, I can't even say that she really cared for him, you know, just because. How, how would you? I mean, I mean, of how, I, I tried to tell Father Nick so many times. I mean, why would you care about that guy? He's a mark for her. Why would I care about no, him? I mean, why would she care? I mean, I, I mean, you I can't, care You can't him. respect somebody that's to, you're taking all that money from. No, like she is. I mean, definitely not. I mean, you know, and I, and, and I told him several four occasions. I mean, me and her just broke up. Couple times. Let me ask you this: If he wasn't a, if he wasn't in the priesthood, and he was just some regular schmo, what would you think of him? A sucker. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I mean, he was benefiting me, so I wouldn't. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't cast bad judgment on him. Man, he's a sucker though for giving all that money to somebody for nothing. I mean, I can't say that. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that because, first off, I mean, I don't, I don't cast bad judgment behind somebody's back. You know, that's not something that I can come to your face and tell you I wouldn't. I'd tell him to his face, you're a sucker for, you know, just giving people money. But if you look at Western Union, man, if you could pull the Western Union up on... I 100% believe that I mean, he sent you that stuff, 100%. I mean, there's, there's probably thousands and thousands of dollars on Western Union. Has he ever bonded you out? He was going to bond me out when I got locked up. Me and Ashley was driving. I got locked up for my first driving, when I, no, second driving when I filed a driver's license here. And... Him and Ashley came down there to bond me out, but they are and are. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to have no bond. So you ever bond her out? Uh, I'm not too sure. I mean, I really ain't. I mean, I can't. I can't. I can't accurately say that because I don't know. I mean, what would be your best guess? I don't know because I don't know how many times she's been locked up, or she's been locked up one time or two times. I mean, how many times she get locked up when you guys were dating? Never. Besides this one time, she went to prison. I mean, how'd she end up down in St. Pete? I think she met this guy named Tom or somebody. Tom, I think I think it was Tom. He's he's on the bond. I know that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but she was with him for a while, you know. And him and her broke up, and that was when me and her got together. And through all that happened with the, her getting kicked out of the truck for not having sex with the dude, she had left that. She had left Tom that night and. Went to a party, you know, she broke up with Tom, went to a party, and that's when she got drunk, and this dude tried her, and, you know what I'm saying, ripped her clothes off and throwed her out the truck, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's when all that happened. I think I actually said father, and they gave her, like, in one year, $40,000. There ain't nobody in the priest didn't afford that. No. Father Rene couldn't have given that amount from his own income, and some type of financial or leadership committee usually determines donations from the church. That amount would not have been granted to just two individuals. So Murray or Shreve lied about or exaggerated the amount. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I not unless they're tapping in the till. I mean, 
you know. You know about business, you know. What I, mean? I know, but but you've been around. You do you agree? No, 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 no. I mean, you know, I can't, I can't judge. I mean, I don't, I'm not I don't asking know you to judge. I'm just asking you to be a reasonable person I mean, and think that nobody short of somebody like Donald Trump is going to be able to give somebody 40 grand. Well, did this man work his life? Did this man retire? Did this man, you know, I mean, you know, you, I, I mean, doubt you, he you had a 401k. You know, you have to think about stuff like that. You know, what did this man do for a living? You know, I mean, so therefore, me saying, oh, this man ain't got that kind of money, you know, I, I, he drove I, I mean, it's okay. in an apartment. It's okay, though. That might be why he had that kind of money. I mean, yeah, because he, he improvised, kind of money, you know. He improvised. <laughs> yeah, he improvised yeah. something. It's just he. Uh, have you ever been to his place and stayed the night over there? Y'all didn't ask me that one time. Was that? Y'all asked me that one time already. If you spent the night at his place? Y'all asked me if I've been over to his place, and I gave y'all an answer. No. I asked if I've been over there. I know where he stays. I said no. It's the same answer. No. I've never had. What was your reason for going down to St. Augustine? I go down there. I mean, I work in St. Augustine. I did jobs in St. Augustine. I mean, I just wanted to ride. I mean, I was riding. You know. Do you see where that would make us concerned now? I mean, I've been down there several times. I mean, I mean, it ain't. I mean, it ain't like I. Hey, let me go to St. Augustine. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I mean, I, I did jobs in St. Augustine. Plenty of jobs. I, Work in St. Augustine more times than we can count on all our hands. I, yeah, I've been down to St. Augustine much times. But think about it: if you were sitting in our chairs, what would you think? As in what? I mean, it's kind of weird that you were down there at that time with all the totality of the circumstances. You know, you you there. understand what we're what we're concerned about, right? Father Renee, I'm finding him. 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 You know, hopefully alive, and <sighs> go from there. <laughs> we talked to a lot of people and everything, and it's, it's it sounds like you just had a really amazing, stressful week with everything that's happened and everything with the stuff you said to family. You know, you called the when the police were over at your dad's house <laughs> Tuesday night. You know. Do you see where we're coming from? See why we're not going to debate about the car issue yeah. I mean there's there's got to be a reasonable explanation for everything you know mistakes happen bad things have happened good things happen but like you said sometimes you're not in your right mind and if that's the case then we can deal with it you know it's it's what it is you know, like the, we were talking about earlier, man, people do good things, people do bad things, but when it's time, the, the best people to do the right, right thing, thing. Time, you know? And I mean, what y'all want me to do? Y'all want me to do the wrong thing and tell y'all a lie? I mean, is that what y'all want to hear? Y'all want me to tell y'all a lie? No, I don't want to hear no lie. I want you to tell us the truth. I mean, I've been telling all the truth, but you know, y'all ask me the same questions over and over again, expecting a different answer. I mean, well, that's the things that we don't think you're being truthful about. Yeah. No, but I mean, Opinions, you know, opinions like assholes. Everybody's got one, you know. That's true. Yeah. Everybody does have an opinion, you know, and I can't, I can't fault you for having an opinion or a title or whatever, you know. But I told you what I need to tell you, and if I won't continue to ask the same questions, and I don't believe there's nothing else we need to talk about. Well, we're not asking the same questions, but there's. Let, let me let me tell you this: If you were sitting on this seat, and I was sitting on that seat, and you have me. Father Rene, you, you you told us earlier today that you called him on Sunday so he can give you a ride to buy some drugs. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't say exactly what day it was. I didn't say Sunday. I mm -hmm. said I called him and told him that I had some money for him because... Father Rene had turned down several of Murray's recent requests for money, so Murray knew he would have to use a different approach to lure the priest there if he wanted to use the car. I have, you know, I missed a couple of weeks because I was locked up. Yeah. And I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I did a little work and I got a little money and I called him and told him, said, I got some money for you, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't tell you exactly what day it was because I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't keep up with it. Well, you know, you have his car. That's the same car that uh, you crashed over here. That's the same car that St. Joe's County Sheriff's Office chased you in. 
You told one no, of the he officers. Didn't chase me. Well, one of the you spoke to one of the JSO officers after the fact, and you told them that you you had the uh, police chasing you, and there was about twelve cars. Okay, so you said that to him. So you have his car. We haven't heard or seen him since. How does that look? Mm, I understand. How does that look? But just because something looks some way, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's and that's 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 what we're trying to refer. It doesn't look good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It does not look good. This man is missing. He's probably out there. Maybe you're telling the truth and telling that he was dropped off over there and that he walked in the woods and something happened to him out there. But I don't think that's accurate because this man, he has a cell phone. Okay? If you left him out there, he could have called the police. He could have called somebody. But he didn't call them. You see what I mean? So there's a lot of things here that are not adding up. If you have a phone and I take you out in the middle of nowhere, out uh, there on wide road, and I drop you off, what are you going to do? I mean, if, I'm, if I'm sitting there waiting on you and you never show back up, what are I'm you probably going to find some other way out. I mean, yeah. I'm probably gonna, what are you probably going to do? I'm probably going to call somebody to come get me. Mm -hmm. Bobby wants to talk to you. Hi. What's up, girl? Hey. Boy. What's doing? Um, uh, sitting here talking to the investigators. Because of the close relationship between Murray and his sister, they are hoping that she can convince him to be honest about the fate of Father Renee. Well, how's it going? Well, I mean, it's, it's going. I mean, I'm... Tired, and they keep asking me the same questions, and keep giving them the same answer. But they think I'm lying, so I think I'm probably probably about to be done talking. I mean, because I'm tired, and I'm ready to go lay down. Uh, why do they think you're lying? <laughs> I don't know. They keep fucking asking the same questions and expecting a different answer, you know. But I mean, I'm giving them the same answer. I mean, I'm telling them the truth, though. I mean. Yeah, they are. Uh... down here. I want some clothes and let me go. Uh, I love you. I love you too, girl. You doing all right? No, not really. I'm still sitting here worried about you. And then, you know, <laughs> I, I like to see that family get some closure, too. And, you know, and then I'm going to be behind the thought and just be like, you know, I don't want to be there for you. Murray's sister was one of the first people to suspect her brother when Father Renee went missing, and she quickly contacted the police. Seems like something you see on TV, yeah. Huh? Seems like something you would see on TV. Yeah, it doesn't seem real. Yeah, no, it don't seem real. Well, I'm here and I got your back, baby. I'm always gonna be here for you, no matter where you're at or, or what's going on. Well, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride this meal to the horns fall off, girl. You know how I'm gonna do it. 
But I'm still alive, you know, so that's one thing to rejoice about. Yeah. Well, um, can I ask you a question? It depends. I'm curious, you A bit of irritation creeps into Murray's voice. He knows that everything his sister says only makes his case look even worse to the detectives. Um, so, is he alive then? I don't know, Jane. That's not an answer that I can give you because I'm not God. Well, when's the last time you saw him? Maybe we can find him and clear all this up. Well, Jean, I mean, I didn't tell the investigators what I know. I mean, uh -huh. I didn't tell them everything I know. I mean, that's all I can tell them. that he was alive and well. Where was the last time you saw him? Where was your end? Gene, I mean, these officers asked me the same questions you asked me. I mean, I feel like I'm being oh. interrogated from every angle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, he keeps showing up knocking on my door, and I don't know what to tell him, and we just want this to be over with. Take I'm out sorry. of his finger. <laughs> Take me back to the jail, lock me up, put throw me in a hole somewhere and cover me up and just, I mean, cause, I mean, I'm not getting nowhere here. The only thing I'm getting to do here is smoke cigarettes, you know, but hell, that ain't, that ain't benefiting me, you know what I mean? I mean, hell, if they throw me a pound of crack on the table, you know, we might be able to fucking come up with something, you know? <laughs> You know what I'm just saying? Big pound of crack on the table, you know? I might, I might be all right. <laughs> oh, man. You're crazy. Okay. Like the police is going to give you a head of crack. <laughs> <laughs> wow, bro. I was a plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you Tell them is what I do know. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I told them. Murray called his sister in a panic after he had shot Father Rene. He had not initially intended to kill him, but became paranoid that he was going to get in trouble for kidnapping him and stealing the car. Once he had some time to cool down, he decided that he wanted to get away with it, if at all possible, and downplayed everything he said to his sister. Yeah, I figured you was out there. And then I tried to call you back because we were going to come get you, but you never responded to me, and a lot of yeah, it's because the SWAT team rolled up behind me and I had to give him a hell of a run. <laughs> yeah, you told me that. 
told me that, and I seen it on the TV. So I knew when when they started, whenever all that popped on the news, so I, and then you called me a little while later for that free 20 second call. You know, I knew it was over with Dad. The police said I was singing on TV. <laughs> no, I don't think they said you were singing. They said you were smiling or something. Yeah. Um, everybody thinks that it's just odd, you know, that you, you would be smiling, I guess. But, you know, we tried to tell them that it, it was probably because that's just you. Like, you were probably judging with the police for making them run and stuff. So. Well, you know, you tell everybody this against me and not for me, you tell them I said fuck them, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll tell them that. Yeah, you tell them that. <laughs> oh, man, bro. Now look, girl, I love you, and you keep your head up, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of what happens, you know that I love you, and you hold that in your heart forever. Okay. Okay. Make sure you tell everybody I said fuck okay? Will you promise me one thing? What? You're already there, and no matter where you are, I'm going to have your back, and I'm going to be there. get crazy you know things get crazy you got family that care for you you got a Roberta that cares about you she called and she wanted me to let you know that she loves you the detective tries to appeal to Murray's better nature to elicit a confession but the attempt is unsuccessful okay you got your family you got Bobby Jean that cares a lot for you there's a lot of stuff that 
you know, we do at times that we're not proud of, that we don't really want to talk about, that you don't want anybody to know, you don't want people to think something that you're not. There's a lot of things that we have to think about. And uh, those things, sometimes you just gotta face it. It doesn't matter how scary it is. It doesn't matter how bad it is. Sometimes you just gotta face it. That's reality. You can't change that. You cannot change who you are. I cannot change who I am. But there are those people in this world that try to do good things. I don't know if Father were there for He told me it looks like he was one of those people. Yeah, good man. Yeah. I don't I never know. I never met the guy. We just out here trying to find him. Dead or alive. We're trying to make him back. You know? I understand that. So, you know, people sometimes people respect you when you do the right thing. And like I said, we do things that we're not proud of. Okay. You feel bad because you're driving his car. I'm pretty sure you're not proud of that. Are you? No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm very excited. You have kids. What What do you want your kids to know when they grow up and try to find out who their father is? You know they're going to find out. You know all they have to do is Google it. They have their last name, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right? So you signed the date of birth, right? That's right. Okay. So you know what they're going to do when they grow up? They're going to Google that crap. And they're going to see Stephen Murray. It's my dad. Okay. How do you want them to remember you? In a good way. Okay. You want them to remember as the man who did the right thing. When yeah. time was tough. Right? That's right. But you know, me sitting there telling y'all a lie with me doing the right thing. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? I don't want you to tell me a lie. Well, if I keep, if I tell you anything else besides what I'm telling you, it would be a lie. I, listen, I think you know a little bit more than what you're telling me. And I'm, I'll be honest with you. I think you know a lot more than what you're telling me. And maybe you're not, you're not telling me or telling Harold over there when he was here because there's something that you might not be proud of, you know? We know that something happened to Rene because that man, he has a phone, he's always on social media, he's always telling people where he's going, okay? He hasn't been in touch with anybody, okay? Since the last time that he met with you. So, there are things that we do that we're not proud of, but at the end of the day, if you do the right thing, it really doesn't matter. You know, that's life. That's what we have to face every day. That is life. I know something happened to him. And it was probably something bad, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. I mean, he could be alive and well somewhere right now. He could be on vacation for all I know. I mean, mm -hmm. He hasn't Come told on. me anything, he hasn't told y'all anything, so Come therefore on. we all don't know. I mean, I don't Steve, know. Steve. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking at the logic of the situation. Yeah, I mean, I mean you're looking at logic. Just because, just because, you know, I go, hey, I went a month without calling. I've been years without calling. I've been a year without getting calls. I mean, but does that yeah. mean, does that mean that, I mean, yeah, some of that. not the too. man Father Ren is. I tell you right now. I had. Tons of people call me trying to find out what happened to this man. Where's this man at? He's always in touch. Every time he goes out, I'll try and tell somebody. Okay? Okay. Every time he goes I have. I know people. I have some people that have seen you with him. Okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm always around Father Renee. I mean... Well, you got arrested yesterday. What do you have? You know what you had. 
You know what I'm talking about, right? What? The credit cards. Yeah, I told you they was in the car. I mean, he was in the car along with all the other Do stuff. Do you think he's going to go on vacation without his credit cards, without money? I mean, I can't help that his stuff was in the car. I mean, his stuff was in the car, his stuff was in the car. When I took off, his stuff was in the car, so, yeah, I had it. I mean, it was in the car. I mean, it was his property. His property was the car, and it was in the car, I mean, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, When you left this man out there, you're a legend that you left him out there. Did you left him with his phone? I don't know what he had. I mean, the phone wasn't in the car, as far as I know. Did y'all search the car and find it? I have a look at the car. I went over here with you. So, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I just I don't got, know. like I, I told you earlier, we just got here. We went and picked you up in order to talk to you. Because you said a lot of things yesterday, man. A lot of things that were a lot of people that do care for you. I don't care if your dad cares for you or not. I don't. I never met the man. I have not told to that man. I know. I can tell you, it's an animal from what you've told me. It's a freaking animal. Okay. So you have the one, the one person, the one person that's done some good for you missing. And I hope you find him in any way I can. I told you that. I tell you that. And, and, and I, I'll take you to where I dropped him off at. I mean. I wasn't gonna let the man ride with me to go pick drugs up. Of course, I mean he he always does that. Was it. I he mean, hurt when you dropped him off? No. Could you hurt him? It, you you just told me that there's sometimes just not that you hurt people. You don't remember? Could you do something like that? I, I mean, mean, no. I mean, no, I don't think I would do anything like that to somebody who who cares for me that much. I mean, no, I couldn't. I mean, because I would, would make you an animal. You don't want to be an animal. No, right? I don't want to be. I mean, and I'm I'm telling you what I know. And if it's any help to you, then by God, I hope it is, but... Murray has harmed both of his sisters numerous times, so his claim that he wouldn't hurt Father Renee isn't reassuring. You know, anything in addition to that, you know, if you want me to tell you anything other than that, it would be a lie. Okay? So you take that and you sleep on it, eat on it, whatever you gotta do. I mean, you know, y'all... Y'all sitting here pushing and getting me nowhere. I mean, I don't, you know, I want to push yeah, my way back. I'm not pushing you, man. I'm not pushing you. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what how things are. You know, I'm not pushing you by no means. I'm not trying to push you. I respect you as a man. I respect what you've told me. Okay. I hope that I've treated you with respect, that the respect that you expected. Okay, when your sister gave you my number and you called, okay, I respected that. I mean, I, you know, I wanted to see what was going on. You know, they told me that Father Renee was missing, and you know, y'all just thinking I had something to do with it. So I said, "Yeah." Because you're, that, you're yeah, well, I mean, you just had admitted here thing. a few minutes ago you were the last person to see him. You have his car. I didn't you, say I was the last person to see him because well, you have his car. I'm off. I mean, you know. I mean, Telling, well, uh, nobody else calls and say there's a priest walking around here. I think I think it's been a long day for all of us. Let's just, let's just be done. A week after he killed Father Rene, Murray led police to his body. He refuses to show them where he hid the gun and continues to try to use it for leverage. Stephen Murray was set to face the death penalty, but was spared by the family and friends of Father Rene, fighting on his behalf claiming that Father Rene was strongly against the death penalty. Murray was given a plea deal and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon link in the description below and drop a like on this video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm always curious to read what you thought of the case.